Hello, hello, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Hi. Good evening, teacher. Good hello, evening. Everyone. How are you guys? Fine, thank you. And Hi. you? I'm great. I'm so happy for today's class. <laughs> thank you so much, Angel, for asking. All right, everyone. Today we have pretty amazing content. Ahora tenemos un contenido super genial, all right? Está bien, um, está bien desarrollado en la PPT, así que vamos a ver cómo nos va. I hope you get pretty good into this content. So everyone, ¿qué tal estuvo su fin de semana? ¿Lograron finalizar la section one and two? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. A comenzar la tercera, la sección tres voy. Yay, excellent. Today we're going to start with section three. Exactamente, Ángel. Ahora vamos a comenzar a desarrollar ya el contenido de la sección tres, right? Very All good. Right. Everybody, what do you do? All right. Vamos a aprender la pronunciation, all right, que muchas veces escuchamos en los TV shows, pero quizás pensábamos que no se pronunciaba, que no se pronunciaba el do, y en realidad sí lo hacían, solo que lo hacían de manera correcta. <laughs> all right, so today we're going to learn that, everybody. Today, let me see, we are in beginners two, class number five. Let's get started. Do you remember? Let's check esta preguntita. Yo creo que ya todos la manejamos, right? Esa es como la segunda presentación PowerPoint en las que les pongo esta preguntita. So it says, mention at least three vocabulary words related to furniture, all right? Vamos a ver si nos acordamos del vocabulario de furniture. Let's see. Dice, menciona al menos tres palabras que estén relacionadas a ese vocabulary. Let me check. Do I have any volunteer? ¿Tengo algún voluntario? Ah, no one. <laughs> you guys, yo sé que se lo pueden. Si no hay tienen el notebook y pueden leer, all right? Este furniture es de lo de lo eh, apartment y todo eso. De eso es. Sí, son las cosas que usted posee en su hogar, all right? Furniture es todo lo mobiliario. Basically, all right? Estamos hablando de pictures, microwave, oven, all right? Claro está, varía de acuerdo a cada cuarto de casa, right? Si tenemos kitchen, ahí hay ciertas cosas. If we have living room, tenemos otras. ¿Tiene algunas vocabulary words, Yami? Eh, yes, entonces, eh, tengo que decir lo que hay en mi casa. Ajá, exacto. Solo dígame tres palabras de las que recuerde de ese vocabulario de furniture, right? Ya vamos a llegar a esa otra parte en la que usted me va a decir todo lo que hay en su casa, all right? Take it easy. Let's see. Television. Ajá, uh -huh. television, very good. Eh, a sofa. Sofa. Ajá. Uh -huh. eh, kitchen. Ajá. Uh -huh. Kitchen, excellent. Actually, right, guys, um, tenemos a stove, right? Adentro del cuarto de kitchen. Thank you, Yami. Adentro del cuarto de kitchen, pues, tenemos a stove, que significa estufa, all right? So, that could be. Let's go with Carlos Antonio, and after Carlos, Kenya. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Carlos. Welcome. Thank you. Table. Coffee tables, picture, clock. Excellent. That's correct, sir. Very good. You remember. Let's Thank go with you. Kenya. Good evening. Good evening. Microwave oven, uh -huh. rock, coffee table, refrigerator. Very good. Excellent. Rock. Excellent that you remember rock. Thank you, Kenya. All right, everybody. There you have it. Pretty plain and basic, right? Eso es como el vocabulary que ustedes tienen que mantener porque ya están aprendiendo las estructuras de los tiempos gramaticales. Pero el vocabulary nos ayuda a poder ya tratar de ejercer sentences, tratar de hacer short conversations, right? Entonces siempre hay que tenerlo en mente. Let's move on. For singular objects. Si bien es cierto, les dije, hoy vamos a iniciar con la section three 
y vamos a avanzar para que ustedes puedan iniciar ya con ella y trabajarla, porque esa semana también vamos a hacer el midterm exam, right? Pero este punto, yo no sé si ustedes recuerdan, pero la clase pasada lo vimos, pero casi no se trabajó en el sentido de que ustedes hicieran sentences, right? Entonces vamos a verlo ahorita, rapidito. For singular objects, we have the structure. Let me check. Eh, Ceci Hernández, can you please read the structure? Me lee la estructura, please. For singular objects. Okay. For singular objects structure, there plus is, is or isn't plus a or no. Plus complement. Excellent, very good job. Thank you, Ceci. You guys se preguntarán quizás, porque aquí suena como A, si en el abecedario que aprendimos, dice A, right? Pues aquí como está actuando como un indefinite article, la pronunciation cambia. Entonces decimos A, for example, a sofa, a table, right? Está haciendo como un artículo indefinido y por eso la pronunciation cambia. Claro está, cuando lo aprendemos en el alphabet, sí va a ir como A, B, C, right? Okay, solo hago esa aclaración. Let's go for plural objects. What's the structure that we have for plural objects? Let me check. Dubla Serna Álvarez, please. Me lee la estructura. Hello, Dublas, are you there? Okay. Let me see if I have another bench person. Uh -huh. Yami, please tell me the structure. Yami Ram. Okay. There plus a aren't mm -hmm. plus some any no plus complement. Excellent. Thank you so much. All right. You know what? I prepared some guiding examples for you. Como les dije la semana pasada, no, sí lo vimos las structures. Quizás algunos de ustedes ya saben cómo manejarla, pero quise traerles unos examples, unos guiding examples, right? Unos ejemplos para que ustedes trabajen en eso. Let's check. Thank you, Jan. All right. Let's move on. Guiding examples with their is. Right? Let's check. Norma Elizabeth, can you please read sentence number one? There is a TV in my living room. That's correct. Excellent. Thank you. Let's go with William Livoria, number two. Good evening. Good evening. There is a window in the in the in my living room. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Thank you. Angel Cano, number three, please. Sin activar el micrófono, no se me hubiera escuchado. <laughs> <laughs> it happens, my friend. Suele pasar, no se preocupe. <laughs> there is a desk in my living room. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Very good. Let's notice everybody. The structure guide us, right? La estructura nos guía cómo lo vamos a utilizar. En este caso, el there is es para singular, right? Cuando nos referimos solo a una cosa. Puede ser que tengamos ese objeto o puede ser que no. Entonces, cuando vamos a, si es negativo, utilizamos isn't, right? O is not. Ustedes deciden. Un advice, un consejito. La mayoría de veces van a escuchar que los natives lo dicen en contractions. Por eso es que a ustedes se les brinda la opción de aprender tanto la contraction y la forma larga, right? Porque yo puedo decir, there is not a desk in my living room. Y también puedo decir, there isn't a desk in my living room. All right? Esto es para que vayamos acostumbrando ya el, el listening, all right? Nuestra audición. So there you have it. And let me check. I don't know if you are copying these examples. If not, I move on. Okay. 
Let's move on. Let's see. Guiding examples with there aren't or there are. ¿Verdad? Tenemos los dos. Even affirmative or positive. No, positive or negative. Let's check these ones. Daisy Carolina, number one, please. There are I and a chair in my bed bedroom. Exactly. Very good job. Thank you. Nancy Gutierrez, number two, please. There are some pictures on my bedroom. Exactly. Very good. In this case, it's affirmative, right? Or positive. There are some pictures in my bedroom. Let's go with, thank you, Nancy. Let's go with. Jose Garcia, number three, please. Hello, Jose, are you there? If not, let me go with Arnoldo Castellón, please, number three. <laughs> Hola. Hello, good evening. La number two. Yes. There are no computer in my kitchen. Exactly, that's correct. Very good. ¿Qué quiero que vean con eso? All right. Cuando, thank you, Arnoldo. Cuando la estructura nos plantea que podemos utilizar el there aren't o el there are not, es por eso. Porque si lo queremos hacer de manera larga, decimos there are not. Y si lo queremos hacer de manera sencilla con contraction, there are it, all right? Is it clear? Hasta ahorita me estoy dando a entender con ustedes. ¿Está todo claro? Yes, I got it. Excellent, sir. Thank you. All right, everybody. Now it's your turn. Ahora sí, ya los dejo solitos. I'm going to ask you only two sentences with there is, dos oraciones con there is, and two sentences with there are or there aren't. You decide, okay? Ah, pues no entendimos, tío. No, broma. <laughs> Yo aquí con la gotita. <laughs> All right, no, don't worry. I got you. ¿Cuántas oraciones? Two with there is and two with there are. Cuando les digo dos con there is y dos con there are, es porque pueden utilizar affirmative y negative en ambas opciones. All right? Tanto para singular como plural. Thank you. You're Para que se les haga un poco más eh, fácil, también pueden utilizar el vocabulary de furniture, all right? Just in case.
Yes, William. You finished or you have a question? Ah, uh, no, yeah, I finished. Okay, excellent. You made your sentences? Excuse me? Give me your sentences. Me regala sus oraciones, please. Okay. Eh, con el there is, there is a stove in my kitchen. There isn't a TV in my bedroom. Con el there are, there are some cups in my bedroom. Mm -hmm. There aren't any toys in the kitchen. All right, excellent. Now you see? Thank you. Estaba difícil, William, o, o fácil? Eh, relativamente. All right, excellent. Very good. Let's go with Angel. Thank you, William. Okay, thank you. Eh, there is a, no sé si se dice así, pero there is a set sofa in my living room. Mm -hmm. There isn't a picture in my dining room. Mm -hmm. There are seats, there are seats chairs in my table. There aren't any picture in my Ahí te, tengo duda cómo, cómo se pronuncia. There, are, there aren't any picture in my terrace. Ah, in my terrace. Terrace. Right. Excellent. Yes, it's correct. Now listen, Angel. In number one. Um, set sofa. Set of sofa. It's okay. Set of sofa. Ah, okay. Te refiere al set, ¿verdad? Un right. set. Complete. Yes, it's okay. okay. Very good, Angel. Yeah. Very good. Estaba fácil, Angel, or difficult? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Pensarlo es lo que... Exactly. Aprender a pensar en inglés es lo que cuesta. Exactly. Very good. Sí, realmente eso es cierto, right? No les voy a mentir. Por eso es que siempre hay que estarlo utilizando cuando se puede, en los momentos de nuestra vida. You need to use it. Es necesario practicarlo y usarlo. All right. Thank you, Angel. Thank you. Now, do I have another volunteer? Somebody else who has finished? Come on, everybody. Today is Monday. We need to be <laughs> cheerful. Excellent, Ceci. Thank you. Um, there is a refrigerator in my kitchen. There isn't a bed in my kitchen. There are some court Thanks in my bedroom. There aren't any lamps in my dining room. All right, excellent. Very good, Ceci. How do you feel? ¿Cómo lo sintió, Ceci? Eh, pues como ya había hecho los ejercicios, ya le comprendí mejor. Right, excellent. Very good job. Ya le su material. Excellent. Thank All right. You. You're welcome, honey. Thank you. Let's go with Eva Argueta and after Eva, Yamira. Okay, action, Eva. There isn't a cat in the garden. There is a toy. There are many books. There are five books on the desk. All right, very good, Eva, excellent, thank you. Very good job. Let's go with Jami. There is a table in the bed. There is a chair in my dining. There isn't a chair in my dining room. Uh -huh. uh, there are no chairs in my bedroom. Mm -hmm. There are no plants in my living room. All right, yes. excellent. There are no plants. Y me gusta que la utilizó también la manera larga. There are no plants. All right. Very good. Usualmente esa manera, everyone, como les digo, sí es permitido porque está, ¿verdad? Existen. Y esa manera en realidad se utiliza como para dar énfasis a algo, right? There are no plants in my yard or there are no plants in my house, right? Very good, Jamie. Thank you. Now, do I have another volunteer before moving on? Uh -huh, let me check. I have two other participants. Norma, excellent, Norma. There is a picture in my bedroom. 
There isn't a picture in my bedroom. There are two TV in my house. There aren't any lamps in my living room. Bravo, excellent. Those are correct, Norma. Thank you. Now, do I have another one? Uh -huh, let me check. We have Arnoldo. Excellent, Arnoldo. Tell me. Ahí me corrí, si me equivoqué. Let's go, action. <laughs> hmm. There aren't any television in my bedroom. There are some cars in my garage. Mm -hmm. There are some mirrors in, in my bedroom. Okay. Very good. Yeah, those are correct, Arnoldo. Tiene la estructura y se escuchan bien también. So they are correct. Okay. Thanks. Let me check. Arnoldo Casier. Excellent. Now, do I have another one, volunteer? Before I move on, porque tenemos un reading, everybody, que es parte de la section two, y quiero que lo leamos para ver cómo estamos con esos readings. All right. So, tenemos que hacer esa lectura y la mayoría de ustedes van a participar. All right. Claro, esta yo lo voy a hacer primero para que ustedes escuchen la pronunciation. But I don't have more volunteers then. Ya no tengo voluntarios. All right. Let me check on this. Hey, means yo. Ajá, excellent, Nancy. Thank you. There is a radio in my bedroom. There is a washing machine in, in my kitchen. They are in curtain in my garage. There are sofa in my living room. Excellent, very good, Nancy. You utilizó otra nueva palabra del vocabulario, right? Machine, washing, machine. machine. Lavadora. Uh -huh. Washing machine. Uh -huh. exactly. exactly, Nancy, very good. Thank you. All right, those are correct. Now, I believe nobody else wants to pass. Si les dan ganas después de, del reading de pasar, o quieren que yo les haga un check en esas sentences, me avisa, ¿ok? So, let's see, reading to special houses. Now you'll see, uh, in other countries around the world, people use different, <laughs> different things to live in, right? For them are houses and they are special, they are weird sometimes, right? So son casas especiales porque muchos de ellos las hacen a su propia manera, como gustan y les place, right? So let's see. Voy yo primero con el reading. Let's pay attention. In San Antonio, Texas, there is a purple house. The house is the home of Sandra Cisneros. Miss Cisneros is a Mexican-American writer. She is famous for her interesting stories. The house has a porch with a pink floor. The rooms are green, pink, and purple. There are many books and colorful paintings. Many other houses near Mrs. Cisneros' house are white or beige. All right, ojo con esa palabra. Mrs. Cisneros, all right? Tenemos que pronunciar esas veces, aunque son a lot of them, all right? Mrs. Cisneros' house are white, or beige. So her house is very different. Some of her neighbors think her house is too colorful, but Mrs. Cisneros loves it. All right, excellent, there you have it. It doesn't matter for her. So let's check. I'm gonna make it bigger for you. Let's see, do I have a volunteer to read this information for me? Okay, Angel, excellent, action. Okay, in San Antonio, Texas, there is a purple house. This house is a, this house is the home of Sandra Cisneros. Mrs. Cisneros is a Mexican-American writer. She is a famous, she is famous for her, for her interesting histories. The house has a porch with a pink floor. The rooms are green, pink, and purple. 
there are many book many books and colorful paintings many other houses near mrs cisneros house are white or beige so her house is very different son son on son all her neighbors think her house is too colorful but mrs cisneros loves it excellent very good job angel excellent thank you now just repeat angel after me this word interesting interesting mm -hmm. interesting interesting excellent very good there you have it that's it let's go with you're welcome sir let's go with jacqueline campos please read it again thank you good evening good evening good evening welcome in San Antonio, Texas, there is a purple house. This house is the home of Sandra Cisneros. Mrs. Cisneros is an American writer. She is famous for her interesting story. The house has a porch with a pink floor. The house has a, po a pardon, the rooms are green, pink, and purple. There are many books and colorful painting. Many other houses near Mrs. Snell's house are white or beige. So her house is very different. Some of her neighbors think her house is too colorful, but Mrs. Snell loves it. Excellent. Very good. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you. Let's check, uh, Jacqueline, repeat after me, famous. What? Famous. Uh, famous, mm -hmm. famous, okay, famous. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you. Now let's go with Gust Gust Ay, Jesus. Gustav, please. Hi. Hi, hello, welcome. Uh, in San Antonio, Texas, there is a purple house. This house is the home of Sandra Cisneros. Miss Cisneros is a Mexican American writer. She famous for her interesting stories. The house has a porch with a pink floor. The room are green, pink and purple. There are many books and colorful painting many other house near miss cisneros house are white a beige so her house is very different so of her neighbors think her house is too colorful but miss cisneros love it Excellent. Bravo, sir. Very good job. No mistakes. We're doing good. Y fíjense, qué bonito. Ya le voy a dar la participation card. Solo voy a hacer este comentario, right? Qué bonito que he visto que todos están leyendo con la punctuation como debe de ser, right? Eh, a veces podríamos pensar que cuesta un poco más, pues no conocemos el idioma y estar leyendo con la punctuation puede ser un poco hard, puede ser un poco difícil, pero hasta ahorita I haven't seen any problem with that, right? We're really good. So let's go with Carlos. Action, Carlos. Después de estar reading, voy al otro y pido más participantes. Action, Carlos. In San Antonio, Texas, there is a purple house. The house is the home of Sandra Cisneros. Mrs. Cisneros is a Mexican-American writer. She is famous for her interesting stories. The house has a porch with a pink coat. The room are the green, pink and the purple. There are many good and colorful paintings. Many other houses near Mrs. Cisneros' house are white or base. So her house is very different. Some of her neighborhood need her house in the colorful book. 
Mrs. Cisneros Love Kids. Excellent, sir. Thank you. Very good job. Just repeat after me, Kate. Solo va a repetir dos palabras, all right? Interesting. Interesting. Perdón. Story. Story. Uh -huh. Excellent. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you. All right, everybody. Let's, let's move on. We have another reading. Ahora aquí sí aquí la participation también de otras personas si lo desean, right? Esto les va a ayudar muchísimo, crean. So we have, every year, many people visit Arizona to learn about Native American tribes. Most people stay in hotels, but some people stay in traditional Native American homes called, slogans, no, called Hogan's. Lorraine Nelson, a teacher from Arizona, invites visitors to stay in her Hogan. It has three chairs, two beds on the floor, and a wood burning stove. Mrs. Nelson teaches her guests about Native American traditions, all right? Guests, all right? We're talking about many people. Cuando dice her guests, tenemos que pronunciar esa S. Sé que cuesta un poquito, pero hay que pronunciarla, right? Porque es plural. Now, let me check. Do I have a volunteer? All right, let's check. Arnoldo Castellón, please. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Every year, many people visit Arizona to learn about Native American tribe. Most people stay in hotels, but some people stay in traditional Native American homes. Khaled Hogan's Lorraine Nelson, a teacher from Arizona, invites this visitor. Me corrige. Visitors. Visitor to stay in her home. It has three chairs, two beds on the floor, on a wood burning stop. Miss Nelson teaches her guests about Native American tradition. Bravo, sir. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Now, let's take everyone. ¿Saben lo que es una wood burning stove? Es lo mismo que una cocina, all right? Pero ¿qué creen que se le pone? <laughs> let's check. También en El Salvador tenemos, pero... Madera. Uh, Leña. Leña, that's correct. <laughs> Very good. Exactly. Eh, son cocinitas como las que nosotros utilizaríamos al salir, right? Al aire libre y cocinamos con leña, right? Wood burning stuff. Es una cabañita pequeña en realidad y aún así logra meter eh, visitors adentro de ella. Increíble. All right, so let me go. I have another volunteer. Ah, yes, I have Carla Alemán, please. Uh, estoy un poco cansada porque soy asmática, pero es, lo voy a intentar. <laughs> es que vi que levantó su mano, por eso te llamé, all right? que sí quiero participar, pero es que a veces me agarra mucho el cansancio, por eso. Yes, pero... it's okay, Agacho. No se preocupe, si se cansa. Okay. Every year, many people visit Arizona to learn about Native American tribes. Most people stay hotel, in hotel, but some people stay in traditional Native American homes. I had uh, oh. guns. Lauren Nelson, <coughs> a teacher from Arizona. Acá no sé cómo se pronuncia. Invites yeah. visitors. Visitors to spy in her own. It's a uh, three chairs to bounce in the floor and a wood burning stove. Miss Nelson did her guess about Native American tradition. Excellent. Good. Thank you so much, Carla, for your effort. 
Excellent. Now let's go with Alba Duarte and after Alba, Norma, and we stop in there. Action. Thank teacher. No. Every year, many people visit Arizona to learn about Native American tribes. Most people stay in hotels, but some people stay in tra traditional Native American homes. Call Carl Holmes Lorraine Nelson, a teacher from Arizona, in visit visitors to stay in her home. It has three chairs, chair, chair, two beds on the floor, and a wood burning stove. Is Nelson teacher here gets about Native American tradition? tradition? Excellent, Alba. Repeat after me, Native. Native. Uh -huh, exactly. Very good. Native American traditions. Very good, Alba. Thank you. Norma. Every year, many people visit Arizona to learn about Native, Native American tribes. Mm -hmm. Most people stay in hotels, but some people stay in traditional Native American homes. Cole Hogan, Lorraine Nelson, a teacher from Arizona, invites visitors to stay in her Hogan. It has three chairs, two beds on the floor, and a good burning stove. Mrs. Nelson, teacher, her gets a bone. Not Native American traditional. Excellent. Thank you. Very good. All right, guys. Para que nos funcionan estos readings. Aparte de que ustedes creo que tienen un exercise ahí que iban a contestar con estos readings. Si se fijan también, quizás antes decíamos native y ahora ya nos estamos acostumbrando a decir native. All right. Native, traditional, también invites, visitors. All right. Y Hogan. Hogan son esas cabañitas pequeñitas que ven ahí, all right? Entonces, ya saben, if you want to travel to Arizona, you can visit one of those Hogan's. Now, let's move on, everybody, to section three. Jobs, vocabulary, and activities, my friends. Let's see. I'm going with you. First time. Les recomiendo que si tienen la posibilidad ahorita, tomen nota de este vocabulary. Quién sabe si mañana les pregunte sobre él, all right? So, let's check. We have Cashier, cashier, cook, cook, chef, chef, doctor, doctor, flight attendant, flight attendant, flight attendant. En esta, letter D, flight attendant es una aeromosa, right? Flight attendant, judge. Judge. Me acerco y pronuncio un poquito más fuerte. Judge. Lawyer. Lawyer. Musician. Musician. Musician, no. Musician. Musician. Nurse. Musician es un músico, ¿verdad? Right? Nurse. Nurse. Pilot. Pilot, no pilot, right? Pilot, no, es pilot. Pilot. Police officer. Police officer. Receptionist. Receptionist. Salesperson. Salesperson. Salesperson es una persona que hace ventas, right? Salesperson. También es una persona que hace contratos y por medio de los contratos, vende algo, tierras, casas, bienes raíces, whatever. Security guard. Security guard. Secu security guard. Singer. Waiter. Waitress. Waiter es camarero. Waitress es camarera. All right. Ese es el único que van a encontrar ustedes que va a ser diferente dependiendo del genre. De ahí, all the other ones son los mismos sin importar el género de la persona. All right, so let's check. Let me see. Let's have. Oh. 
Um, William Liborio, please tell me the vocabulary. Me regala el vocabulary, please. Okay. Cashier, cook, chef, doctor, flight attendant, judge, lawyer, la jesi no se pronuncia. Musician, musician, nurse, pilot, police officer, receptionist, salesperson, security, security ward, singer, waiter, waitress. That's correct, sir. Excellent. Very good. Now, <clears throat> let me go with Eva Argueta, please. All right, everyone. Solo no nos olvidemos que en cashier damos esa entonación más fuerte cuando decimos cashier. All right? Action, Edita, please. Cashier, book chef, doctor, flight attender, jazz, liar, musician, nurse, Pilot, police office, receptionist, salesperson, security guard, singer, writer, and writers. Excellent, very good, thank you. Now, before we move on, quiero hacerles aquí un paréntesis, en lawyer, right? Tenemos que tener mucho cuidado con esa palabra, porque lawyer puede verse escuchar similar a lawyer. Right? Liar es mentiroso y lawyer es un abogado. All right? Son cosas muy diferentes. Entonces, esa pronunciation tiene que estar correcta. Right? Aquí no hay de que todo oh, no me sale. You need to practice. You need to practice. Aunque significa lo mismo, teacher. <laughs> no, we cannot say that. We cannot say that. All right? No, no, no. Pero sí, quería hacerles ese énfasis porque imagínense están en Protesto, una... protesto. Yes, soy abogado, it. pero no soy mentiroso. All right, excellent. Now you see, yo Por eso le dije. Let's check. Now you guys, solo, de regreso. Imagínense están hablando con un Native American, all right? Entonces, tenemos que hacer bien la pronunciation. Lawyer, I'm a lawyer. No, I'm a liar, right? Si no queremos confundir, all right? Let's move on. Let's go. Do I have another volunteer for telling me the vocabulary? Carlos Antonio, excellent. Thank you. Cacho, cook, chef, doctor, flight attendant, jode, liar, musician, nurse, pilot, police office, receptionist, sales person, security ward, singer, waiter, and waitress. Excellent, very good. Repeat after me, Carlos. Lawyer. Lawyer. Lawyer, excellent. Casi lawyer. como si tuviera O, right? Lawyer. Lawyer, very... no liar. <laughs> exactly, different. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Bueno. Let's go with Alba Duarte, y luego after Alba, Yami Ram. Okay, cashier, cook, chef, doctor, flight attendant. Uh, ju ¿Cómo se pronuncia ahí? Judge. Judge. Mm -hmm. lawyer, lawyer, musician, nurse, pilot, police officer, recep receptionist, sales person, security guard, singer, waiter, waitress. Okay, repeat after me. Waiter. Waitress. 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 Thank you, Alvita. Action, Yami. And after Yami, Damaris Vega. Cashier. Cook. Chef. Doctor. Fly attendant. Judge. Lawyer, musician, nurse, pilot, police officer, receptionist, sales person, security guard, singer, waiter, waitress. 
Very good, Jami. Thank you. Excellent. No mistakes. We're doing good. Let's go with Damaris, please. Cashier, cook, chef, doctor, flight attendant, judge, lawyer, musician, nurse, pilot, police officer, receptionist, salesperson, security guard, singer, waiter, waitress. That's correct. Excellent. Very good. And we have one more chance for one more person, All right? Tenemos un chance más para una persona. Let's go, Norma. Action. Cashier, cook, chef, doctor, fly attendant, judge, sí. judge, lawyer, musician, nurse, pilot, police officer, reception, salesperson, security guard, singer, waiter, waitress. Excellent. Thank you, Norma. All right, guys. Thank you so much, everyone, for telling me the vocabulary. All right. Así los ayudo yo, aunque ahorita estamos todos perfecto, right? Son en esta, security guard. Casi como si no tuviera la U, right? Security guard. Guard. And that's it. The more you practice, the better it will be, believe me. Entre más practiquemos, todavía mejor. All right, places. Yes, my friends. Eso es lo que, lo que acabamos de ver, es lo que conocemos como jobs o también las profesiones, right De cada persona. Pero tenemos los lugares donde ellos laboran, que es places, y también tenemos las activities. All right? Este vocabulario está completo. Nos da la profession, nos da la, el labor, nos da el lugar, nos da las activities. So let's see. Places. In a hospital. In an office. In a store. In a hotel, right? Let's repeat one more time. Places. In a hospital. In an office. In a store. In a hotel. We have activities. Activities. Wears a uniform. <clears throat> Sits all day. Talks to people. Works hard. Stands all day. Handles money. Works at night, writes tickets. All right? Ahora sí, voy a pedir a otros volunteers. Antes de moverme aquí a uh, pedir volunteers, ¿hay alguna pregunta sobre el vocabulary que tengan? Tal vez que significa algo. Let me know. Los significados, sería bueno. <laughs> All right, Carla. Let's see. Right, where's a uniform, all right? Aunque la mayoría tenemos empleo, no siempre nos toca utilizar un uniforme. Y esto de where's a uniform es utilizar uniforme, all right? Where's a uniform? No decimos use, utilizamos where's. Where's? Sits all day. Pasa sentado todo el día, right? Talks to people. Una persona que le toca estar hablando con las demás personas, right? Y no para. Works hard, muy trabajador. Todos, right? Stands all day. Pasa parado. O está parado todo el día. Handles money. Maneja dinero. All right? Maneja dinero. Handles is manejar. Right? Maneja dinero. Works at night. Trabaja de noche. Writes tickets. Escribe tickets. Firma tickets. O chequea los tickets. Right? Puede ser en cualquiera de esos. Por ejemplo, una persona que trabaja en el movie theater hace eso de write tickets, right? Cuando ustedes ya van a entrar al cine, write tickets. So those are the meanings. Now, let's go to somebody. Let me see. Cecilia Rivas, please tell me the vocabulary of places and activities. Hey, good evening. Good evening. Uh, place in a hospital, in an office. In a store, in a hot hotel. Mm -hmm. Activities, wears a uniform, sits all day, talk to people, works hard, stand all day, all day, handies money, works at night, writes tickets. Excellent, thank you. Thank you. Let's go with Ana Maritza, please. Tell me the vocabulary, places, 
and activities. Hello, Ana, are you there? Veo que tiene el micrófono encendido, pero no se le escucha, amiga. No, no yet. Okay, I'm sorry. Maybe you can participate later. Tal vez le funciona el mic. Let's go with Jose Garcia, please. Yeah, please. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Jose. A uh, place in a hospital, in an office, in a store, in a hotel, activities, wears a uniform, mm -hmm. sit all day, talk to people, people mm -hmm. work hard, stay all day, hand this money, work at night, right? Ticket. That's correct, Ticket. sir. Thank you. Yes, tickets. Teacher, uh, teacher, uh -huh. excuse me. Um, I am a working. You're working. Yeah, don't worry, sir. I want to ask you again participation. All right. Thank you. I know okay, it was teacher, a thank you. Let's see. Let's check and let's go with Angel Cano, please. Okay, teacher. Places. In a hospital, in an office, in a store, in a hotel, activities, wears mm -hmm. a, a uniform. uniform. Mm -hmm. Por eso es que tiene A y no A, ¿verdad? Uh -huh, Porque, exactly. Okay. Por el uso sí. de la vowel en el noun. Por el uso de la vocal en, en el noun. Excelente. Sits all day. Mm -hmm. Talks to people, works hard, stands, stands, stands all day, handles money, works at night, and, and buys tickets. Excellent. Very good, sir. Thank you. Now, everybody, let's check this out. I have some guiding examples. También chiquitos estos guiding examples, right? But let's check. I only have two. <laughs> at Jeff works in a restaurant, right? A chef works in a restaurant. Place. No estoy diciendo de qué trabaja, pero si digo el lugar. A chef works in a restaurant. Pregunta, Number teacher. Ajá, uh -huh. William. Eh, con la palabra anterior y con esta segunda oración, uh -huh. ¿por qué eh, la A No lleva la N, si la palabra que continúa comienza con una vocal. Ah, right. Son los indefinite articles, right? Solo me confirma, William, y no sé si usted estuvo en el nivel 1, beginners 1. Ay, no, se le cortó. No sé si me escucha, William. Bueno. Hello, ¿ya me escucha, William? Perdón, sí, eh, quiero que el problema de internet fue mío. No, eh, eh, la pregunta era por qué en la segunda oración la A va sola y no acompañada de la N, si la siguiente oración va, eh, perdón, la palabra va con vocal. Ah, uniform. Ah, no, ese fue un error aquí. <risa> All right. Thank you, William. No, sí está bien lo que usted decía. Tiene que llevar la N, right? Lo okay. borré. No sé cómo lo borré, pero lo borré. <risa> Thank you, William. Sí, la cuestión está en los indefinite articles, guys que quizás la mayoría de ustedes ya lo conocen, como bien mencionaban ahí. Si la siguiente palabra inicia con una vocal, tenemos que utilizar an. Y si la palabra comienza con una consonant, otra letra del abecedario, utilizamos a. Right? Eso así nos lo piden los indefinite articles. Thank you, William. Now, guys, a chef wears a uniform. Right? A uniform. Let me check, William. Mm -hmm. No, but this is this one is incorrect, all right? Dice tiene que llevar el an and uniform. Where's an uniform? Le preguntaba porque incluso ahí mm -hmm. está ajá, solo la A. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Very good, William. Sí, aquí tiene que llevar el N. 
right? Excellent. Very good, guys. ¿Qué vamos a hacer con esto? Let's check. Let's practice. Instruction. Let's pay attention to the instructions, all right? No lo vamos a trabajar aquí. Si ustedes antes de dormir se pueden hacerlo, good for you. Si no, lo vamos a trabajar mañana. Eh, let me check. William, tell me the instructions, please. Me dice las instrucciones. Okay. Let's practice. Work individually. Great. ¿Cómo se pronuncia? Eh, create. at least. Uh, three sentences using the vocabulary present. Then share your sentences with the class. That's correct. Excellent. Very good job. Eso es lo que van a hacer ustedes, right? For tomorrow's class, si ustedes quieren, ya las saben hechas sus sentences. Si no, las hacen aquí en el classroom, right? Now, everybody, eh, recordemos, ya podemos comenzar a trabajar en la section five. Y solo vamos a ver un poquito de esto antes de irnos. Right? Ya solamente explico eso. Let's see. Pronunciation, reduction of do and does. Recordemos, esta no se pronuncia do. Es do and does. Where do you work? Así suena si nosotros hablamos de espacio. <ríe> ok, where do you work? Pero unido suena where do you work? Where do you work? Okay, where do you work? What do you do? What do you do? Or, what do you do? Escuchen esto, what do you do? Así se escucha en muchos TV shows. Casi como si tuviera una R en esa unión, right? What do you do? Les hago énfasis en esto porque esa pronunciation, sí, correctamente es what do you do? Where do you work? Right? Si hablamos de espacio. Pero los natives cuando hablan rápido, podemos llegar a cometer el error de pensar que no lo dijeron cuando sí lo dicen. Right? Where does he work? Where does he work? What does he do? What does he do? Right? Yo voy rápido por eso, so no se preocupen, voy rápido en realidad. Where do, you, where do they work? Where do they work? What do they do? What do they do? All right? Let's practice. That's gonna be your homework. For tomorrow's class, para mañana todos van a pasar en esta reduction, en esta parte de la reduction. Ya llevo los nombres de todos aquí, así que espero que mañana todos se conecten, right? Es necesario que aprendamos esta reduction. Yes, William? La presentación anterior la puede poner, dice, para por lo menos eh, chaspucear ahí con las oraciones. All right. Eh, esta, William? Eh, la, la siguiente. Ay, esta. La anterior. <risa> la de let's practice. Esta, la Esa, let's... correcto. Con las right. indicaciones. Son tres oraciones, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Three sentences. Very good. Cuando me refiero a sentences, aquí no han visto algo específicamente como una estructura, pero ustedes ya lo llevan, right Un subject. Yami, do you have a question? Yes, teacher. Este... Usted dijo que o sea, ya podíamos trabajar en la, en la parte 5, pero vamos por la lección. ¿Qué son tres? Sí, en la, en la sección, en la lección 3 pueden empezar a trabajar ya. All right. De verdad dije 5 ya. I'm sorry. All right. No, pero es en la 3. All right. Number 3. Aquí, eso les quiero mostrar, everybody. Recuerden, pueden comenzar con un subject, que ya tienen ahí su subject, chef, eh, pilot, nurse, whatever you want to use. Works, mi verbo con third person singular, y luego el resto es el complement. All right? That's pretty much it. Mañana les chequeo sus sentences y continuamos trabajando en la section 3. Ustedes pueden iniciar desde ya. Y les deseo mucho éxito. I will see you tomorrow. Bye. 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 Bye.